Hello my beautiful people, we're back again on Street and Cathedral. Today's topic, the criminality of poverty. We're going to be entertaining two amazing, amazing, amazing guests today. These people are so, so intelligent, brilliant, vibrant voice, revolutionary voice. And believe me, today's topic is going to be so, so different. Big shout out to everybody joining. Okay, I can see you. Mr. Ayomex, Awameji, Abao. <laughs> oh man, I have to be decent because I don't want to be a tout. It's it's it's, it's a fun. <laughs> God, man, man, I'm always forgetting that. Don't mind me, I'm always you know <laughs> I'm a very jovial person. So now this is it. Yeah, it's the net. Ah, hello, ye, Mazi. What is going on? It's the network. Believe me, it's the network. Uh, I I want to believe maybe it's the service provider from there. I thought that's much. With that being said, let me just do the introduction real quick, and so we don't waste much time. Because why try to connect? Lots, you know, much time has been wasted. So, um, like I said, this is Street and Cathedral. You welcome to my space. The street stands for the voice of the people. The Cathedral there is just a symbol of spiritual alignment. Respect to everybody stands on spiritual alignment, but we as African people, we cannot allow religion to be a division amidst us any longer. We should have actually be able to, you know, intellectually soar above that sentiment and push forward humanity. So you're welcome to my space properly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the topic on Street and Cathedral, the criminality of poverty. Right here with me, I have Mazi Obina Umwaka. Mazi Obina Waka is the director general at the Committee of Youth on Mobilization and Sensitization. This platform alone uh, is alienated to Tonto Diki and a lot, a lot, a lot of icons. And he has been at the forefront of pushing this crusade for youth in Nigeria at the national level. And uh, when I say national level, I mean um, having access and doors, you know, access to the residential villa itself. Mazi also is a focal person at the United Nations and missed his many, many accolades. So you are going to excuse me on many of your accolades because we are going to need a different program in order to spread out that. But that being said, you are welcome properly on Street and Cathedral. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. So um, Oloye, on the other hand, which I'm still expecting to join back, is the network is really, really terrible. Uh, He's a very, very vibrant person. Maximum respect to him. I, I so much respect him. He's a senior colleague. We met while at um, the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Um, I want to say this to his presence while he joins back. Uh, personally, Oloye, while, you know, at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, these uh, people who saw their energy, their attitude, and their vibrancy, Oloye, this is your introduction. I'm just trying to run over it so we don't waste more time. Oloye's energy, I want to believe his energy is unmatched. Personally to me, I have never seen someone whose energy... The network is really terrible. Personally to me, I've never seen someone whose energy is that, you know, I... I, I can remember back, right back from school, Oloye has always been telling the truth through the pain. He has been in trouble with police, police coming to arrest him, and he's always been vindicated. He has always been fearless in order to leave the face of authorities and speak his truth. Mm. So, um, he's the founder of Doc FM Chalingo, Taraba, and also the founder of Contact Newspaper, Internet, okay, NTA, and so. So, Mazi, let us just jump into the conversation today without wasting much time. I'm still going to wait for Oloye to join back. Uh, the topic, as it says, it says criminality of poverty. Now, let me ask you a question. Because some people would say that, oh, Mazi now is already, uh, you know, working in, a, in a, you know, having conversation with people in power. He has access to the um, Asurok. Maybe he's actually distant from the reality of the common people. So what do you understand by poverty? 
you know, how do you define poverty? Uh, 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 in your own view, uh, would you also give us, you know, personal stories if you have actually had experience of this, uh, 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 of this reality called poverty itself? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Dimeji. And I would like to also utilize this wonderful medium to commend you for the great job you are doing. You know, uh, uh, public relation work is very, very tactical and sensitive. It's not, uh, it's not meant for every person. So it has to do with people who are mentally set, fit, and also has to do with their technical know-how. So and this topic is very, very important. Why I say it's very, very important is I, I'm, a, I'm an example of a, somebody who was born into a poverty. You understand? And it's something that I don't wish my, even my enemies. It's something that is very bad. Poverty has so many definitions that you can put. Poverty of the mindset. Poverty of the mindset. Mindset is that state of mind where you don't believe in something positive, where you don't believe that you can even make it, where you don't believe that you can grow, where you don't believe that uh, your current state or status can be better than uh, uh, your previous state. And poverty is inability to access somehow information, privilege to lifestyle that you prefer privilege to good education, privilege to good life, good health, medicals, and all those kind of something. So people like us who were born into abject poverty, we know what it means to be in poverty situation. So if, and if, it's if, something that we never wished our enemies at all. So if, if I take you by your words, even though what we see right now, that, oh, Mazi is now a focal person at United Nations, you have access to the, you know, to the, to the presidential villa at Asso Rock. It doesn't mean that you were born with silver spoon. You actually walked yourself to that top. If that is your story, and I believe that you are the right person, the right voice on this platform. That being said, Oloye, you're welcome. Let me throw this question to you, Oloye. I have made your introduction before you came. I have given you your flowers. I have said it. You've been a senior colleague. Personally, to me, I believe you have one of the vibrant, you know, the, 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 the vo voracious fire I have ever witnessed in my life. I remember back then, you know, uh, you are a senior colleague, someone who was, you know, far ahead of us when it comes to, you know, class and, you know, uh, experience. Uh, the network again, jeez. Okay, uh, thank you for that, um, uh, Mazi. Now, 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 let us take it from, from these now. You've given us a, your personal stories and you've told, told us about... Um, uh, you know, uh, your, po your poverty, understanding poverty, which you don't wish your enemy love. So let us now talk now. Is there actually a link between crime and poverty? Do you really think that, that poverty actually opens people up for committing crime? So if we throw that into, into the open, then I'll give a follow-up question on that. Because a lot of people have been saying that the reason why we have high crime rates right now in the society is because people are trying to fight for survival. It is, is, that, is that the truth? I will say yes, I will also say no. But according to what I just said, everything has to do with your mindset, your personality, your own personal conviction, your vision, and all those things. Now, let me share one experience. I was born into a family that is in abject poverty. Two, we are living in one room, family of seven. In one room in Lagos, in the ghetto, you understand, in Suleri, then in the Syria. So I had access to several lifestyles and people that poverty mm -hmm. have changed their own mentality that are involved into crime, cultism, robbery, uh, uh, snatching of phones and all those things. So you understand? But my own mindset is quite different. I did not say I don't know them. They are not my neighbors. They are not my friends. They are not people that I can talk to. I saw people who were taken in their homes in every street in Lagos then in the ghetto, every street have their own joints. And what is causing all those things, when young people, when kids, when teenagers are mingling with people that are taking in their home, a lot of hard drugs and all those things, it is poverty because of where you were born into. But among those set of people, you will see discover that there are some people who are highly intellectual. Maybe because one thing or the other, 
made them to get herself involved into such acts. Now, let me tell you something. I got my jam score that I used to enroll into university, 345, my jam score. No, 245, my jam score so many years ago. Now, let me tell you something again. Because of poverty, I did what they call a scavenger. I did a scavenger work, kule kule, because I just I needed to save money to write that same jam to secure admission. You understand? So I did that job in Ireland, in Ikeja, and all those uh, 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 exposed and uh, uh, developed areas in Lagos State. But why did I do those jobs? One, because of poverty, lack of privilege towards finance, because of the level of my family. But I did not want to go into criminal activity just for me to secure, to buy a jam phone. I did not. How much was jam from them? But I decided to take that minor job, dirty job. Not dirty as per, it's a criminal job. Dirty as per is a job that, you know, nobody wishes or her son or her children to be. They know what you mean by kule kule now, okay. uh, scavenger. Uh, 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 but I was able to do all those things. I got a good jam score. I got myself into university. When I was even in university, I had to take a security job just to fend myself in the university. Okay, my course made to be see me, Mazi. but you know, it's, it, it, does, it has to do with, and at the same time, it does not have to do with. But the most important is your mindset, okay. your conviction, okay. your vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do me one favor, do me one favor. Hold, hold your talk for one second, because I want Oloye to meet us in this conversation. I know it's been back and forth. I think his network is now stable. Oloye, you are welcome yeah. on board. I have given you your flowers duly before you came. I've introduced you. And right to your face, I'm saying it, that personally, um, I know you were a senior colleague of mine when we were in NIJ, but I've witnessed you, Baba. I have witnessed you while as a student telling your truth into the system face. I've witnessed even the police coming to arrest you. And you told your truth fearlessly. You came out and you are still that vibrant truth, fearless, revolutionary. And moving on from there, you are someone, uh, I would say, I don't, I can't speak for others. I would ask someone, you are one of those people I would say that I have observed over the years. In line of this profession, I've said, in one way, you've inspired me to say, I'm going to be telling my truth in my own way too. Now, Oloye, my question for you is this. If you look at the question very well, people want to say that, that okay, uh, Oloye now is the founder of Rock FM Jalingo. He's also the founder of Taraba Truth and Facts newspaper, intent at National Television oh. Authority, NTA. He was also the former head of People's Media Limited, etc., amongst your many accolades. That, oh, these people have privilege. Has that always been true? We want to, in briefly, in the way you can share it, because what can you, you know, when you say understanding poverty, what can you say is poverty? And what is your own story alienated to that word, you know, poverty, to that reality called poverty in Nigeria, realities and predicaments? Okay, thank you so much, um, Dimeji, for having me on the streets and um, on street and cathedral. Um, I tried to pass some opening remarks earlier. It's um, interesting to be here and to have uh, this conversation with great minds like you and Mazi. Um, I've been having network issues, but I feel it's a little bit stable. I have to change my location. Huh. Um, my story with poverty, where? Um, I, I would not want to sound um, subjudice over from that, but I have a point that I've always made. Everybody's poor. We are born in Africa, particularly West Africa, where poverty rate is very, very high. We are born in a society whereby um, uh, the privilege, the bourgeois, uh, takes the, the lead in everything we do. And then somehow, directly or indirectly, uh, poverty has shaped our being over the years. Um, I grew up, I was, I was born in Agege. Um, in fact, when we say Agege, let me put it this way. I was born in Papa Shafa. Papa Shafa is a very densely populated area in Lagos State. I grew up in Egbeda, axis of Lagos State. That is also a densely highly populated area. Well, um, if you look at some indices, I would say my parents were not poor. If you also look at some indices, I can also say they are poor because we are in a poor society and you can't remove the people from poverty. Um, also, 
let me also put it that um, in every way, just like Mazi said, Mazi decided not to embrace criminality just because he wants to get a jump phone. I can imagine him snatching a bag or snatching someone's phone could have solved that problem in the tinkle of an eye. Uh, but he had to take up to um, some minion street jobs to do that. I, in my own regard, I started journalism very early, where not because I could not the, you know, there was the middle class fight in the country before before now, but um, in every team, I've seen myself working up, working very hard, um, riding, riding rising through the ladder to to get to where i might be today i can yeah. like i can uh, boldly yeah. say yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm i'm sorry to cut you short your story is actually a very very big inspiration and i'm not trying to mix words together you see when i when i devised this topic i was looking for the perfect voice on it and i actually single-handedly i felt like i needed to reach out to both of you because you are the perfect story of grass to grace, honestly, because to some certain extent, I know your, your story. But my question is this, let us be, I understand the fact that Mazia and you have actually presented with, with your, your own personal decision, but do you really, let us talk at the large spectrum now, do you really feel, because that is where Mazia and I, we've been having conversation before now, I want, us to, I want you to meet us at that pedestal. Do you see a linkage between crime and poverty in the real sense in the society? Can we actually find a common ground that, oh, to be, to be honest, even though it has to boil down to some certain, you know, maybe family values or personal decision, but there's still vast you know, linkage between crime and poverty, or it is not so. You mentioned there's a huge linkage between crime and poverty. Let me, let me tell you something, 70 or 90 percent, okay, let me say 70 percent of crimes in Nigeria, or in our society, are based on poverty, poverty of the mind, poverty of um, of common needs. Let, let me just let me just give you a very straight example, and I've explained this over time. Because a civil servant who does not have a house wants to own a, a house at all costs, he will commit financial crime. Just imagine a society whereby we have everything. You are employed. You have a you have a house. You have a car. The, your salary is enough to pay your children's school fees to put them in in some level of um, standard school. The level of financial crime in that sector is very minimal, and it has been proven right. Look at organizations that pay their staffs very well. What is the level of financial? Uh, crime in that area because when we talk about crime crime is not only where you steal or when you commit uh probably when you a whole lot of things accumulate to crime non paying of your tax is a crime but how many of us pay tax mm -hmm. we don't pay tax because we are poor mm -hmm. well I, I i i love that i love that and this is where i'm going to move us forward now from that conference Mazi, i want you to jump in right now the question now is systemic issues. Now, people believe that um, it is a systemic issue. It is not a personal issue on family borderline or personal borderline, that it has been some sort of policy, uh, governmental policy that has, and societal norm that has contributed to the cycle of poverty and crime in Nigeria. Could you say, in another way, people trying to blame government, that is the summary, in that line that it is actually systemic issue that is responsible for the high rate of co poverty in the land. So, Mazi, I want you to jump in. Then Oloye also would have actually also jump in on the same question. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, we live in a society whereby uh, sometimes when people commit crime, they will blame the government. But if they are succeeding, they will not applaud the government. Just like I told you, <laughs> eh? I had every opportunity to commit crime when I was growing up. Because I, I was born in the area where crime was like the norms. But mm. I did not 
growing up, even when I was in university. Would you say, would, would you say it's your family value that held you or fear of it? Fear of the consequences? No, it is my own personal conviction. Because I, I, I lived in an environment, so it's my own personal conviction. My vision, I started developing the vision of where I want to go to, right from when I was in, in, in the secondary school. I want to be this, I want to be that. So, and I did not, not allow my environment to do what? To change my mindset. And also God, you know, you know, once you have fear of God, you will conquer so many things. Most of the young people we are seeing today, they don't have the fear of God. We are not going to church every Sunday or weekly activity because we just want to be praying to God. There are some things you hear, there are some things you see that is going to inculcate into your heart. One, I had the fear of God. Number two, I had a vision. I want to be an economist. I want to be a teacher. And I saw some people that I can take as my mentor. I had one of them who were my mentor that taught me very well. I, I got a good grade in the university. If one or two people joined this live conversation, she used to be my junior in the university. Today, do you know that mentor in her own field of life? I can't count how many times I invited her to Abuja to attend some seminars. I linked her up to some agency that are helping her. Do you understand? So it is not about the government. I am one of the beneficiaries of government today. I also have opportunity to commit crime into the, even the government. But I'm not. Uh, let me tell you, I have so many people who come to me. This is what they want. They will try to also change your mindset into criminality. I do not forget that I'm very close to the EFCC very close to the EFCC chairman. What made me close to them? Because I'm one of the ambassadors. So they did not pick me because of this guy is in this position today. They also follow your antecedent. They know who you are. They read your profile. So it is not all about the government. But most of, well, if it's all about the government, why are people in the government also stealing, also committing crime? Why are the police officers also committing crime? Why are the people who are the EFCC also committing crime? They are alleging. Why are the people who are meant to even fight criminals also committing crime? <laughs> so it is not all about the government. It's all about what? The mindset. I just told you something. When I was in university, I was the first course leader in my department. I saw that being a course rep will not even help me to further this medication. I should not deceive myself. Or else I would just be eating and embezzling their money. I took a minor job again in university. I work as a security man in the Fidelity Bank, close to my university, putting on security uniform. But you know one thing, one, somebody called me three weeks ago. He told me, Chief Obina, that I'm his classmate. The last time he saw me, I was putting on a security uniform in Fidelity Bank. But a few days ago, he saw me on live television on the NTA that I was blowing grammar. That is proud of me. So if I had, if I had not have this belief and mindset in my own self, I said, because I'm in university, let me join all these guys that are, that are blocking the road, committing crime, snatching phones. If they have killed me, will I be director general of CYMS today? Hmm. Well, you, I, 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 I love that. You know the reason. Just a few that, days ago, I was because, a minister of um, youth. I was a minister of youth. I was the permanent sec about four permanent secretaries. I was with senators. I was as I said to the president, we were all together on the same high table that I sat. People were also watching me live. I was on all over all the television stations. So, it is not all about the government. It's all about your mindset. And people who are blaming government. I know there are so, the only policy, the only issue that we have with the government, there are some policy that will not make your business to strive. But you cannot blame government that because of as old as you are, you are 18 years and above, and you want to keep blaming government. Have you also asked yourself a question? What can I do for my government? Hmm. Do you know what gave me my chief title to? Yes. I had the opportunity to use a huge amount of money to buy what? To buy a very big lessons that what about 20 something million era. I asked myself a question. What can I do for my community? There are some part of my community that does not even have, they have not seen light before. Po, Nepal light and all those things. I call somebody, I also call the Nepal people. I want those people to have light. I bought less than 20 something poles 
the wire, I gave the contract to the Nepal people. They connected the lights in that area. With three faces, my community heard it that. They thought it was a Yahoo boy that was doing it because I gave the contract to my uncle, whose son is a Yahoo boy. My uncle was telling people that it's my son you know handling the project. You, know, you are not even scared to call out your own family. <laughs> yes, so now. You, yes, family. now. So, so people were people were applauding my uncle's son that is the one in charge of the project. It was only one guy that told them, no, it is comrade. Then I was a comrade that is comrade Obina that is doing this project. The community heard it. The kinsmen heard it. They said, no, it is done for this guy. He's a good ambassador of this community. He has been helping it of young people. There is no community, there's no village in my community that have not impacted their life. If anybody is graduating in my community today, from every family, I impacted their life. You know, See, today, it's really high time you know to what, give this guy. You know what, you so not, if I you can do a NEPA project for NEPA, who is a government, I'm, why are people I'm, blaming government yeah, yeah, all the time? Yeah, uh, Thank you for that discussion. And, and, and I see, not, necessarily, not necessarily okay. we are blaming government. Let's blame the society. Uh, you Olu, see, Olu, wait, Olu, wait, you are going to talk now because I want you to you I want to take you by your own way too. You said poverty of the mind. You said poverty of the common need. Now, uh, in answering your question, I want you to also try to explain what you meant by poverty of the mind and poverty of the common need so that people will understand you know, your stance put on that. Yeah, now you can, you can comment. Okay. Let me say poverty of the mind. And I'll use myself as an example. Until recently, um, um, okay, before now, as a roving journalist, I attended the whole lot of events in Lagos State, in, around in nice places. And then um, when it's time for buffet, do you know sometimes, I take more than what I can eat. I, I obviously I cannot finish this thing, but I keep loading my plates. Guys, 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 that is one of the mindsets of grabbing anything you see, whether you need it or not. Poverty of the mind is when you are mentally poor. When, when you don't look, when you look at things from a greedy perspective. Like Obina just said, uh, Mazi just said now. He said he, he could have bought a 25 million era car and be riding across the, uh, around his community. But his community, part of his community does not have light. And he decided to use part of that money. Obina, uh, Mazi, not would even part of that money. I use the whole money. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, wow. okay, now you could have still used maybe God. Get a five million or three million era car and spend 22 million era on that project. But now, Mazi used all the money on that project. That is a progressive mindset. Yeah, let me, let me mm. I don't know. That is a progressive zoom. mindset. When you talk about poverty of common need, of what you need, is somebody who is poor because he does not have what to do. There are rich people. Who are also who are poor mentally, who don't see any good in common words. They want to amass all the common words to themselves. Mm -hmm. And those ones are also poor. They are poor. Mm -hmm. See, it's mm -hmm. poverty that will make you to take what you don't need. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody that steal twenty billion, <laughs> you just have to go and do a mental <laughs> check of that person. Said something at the garden one day. I think it was a private garden or so. He said to stress to, 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 to stress your point, Pastor Tinebakar is actually my uncle, so you can continue. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please. I don't want to go to um he said, Why will a governor of a state be struggling to build a house? Hmm. I think those are things you should have had before you become a governor. You should have won houses of your choice. But because of poverty of the mind, the governor is stealing. Can you imagine somebody like MQ Abiola becoming who was who actually won the June 12 election, sworn as president of the country? Do you think MQ Abiola needs to steal? But 
with, with Nigerian magic that has happened so far, it, it could still happen. It could still happen because we've seen rich people taking what they don't need, like you said. So it's still well, not to surprises us in Nigeria, but I'm just trying to butcher that. Yeah. He's let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You see, <laughs> let me tell you something. I'm one of, I, 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 I did not, I did not have the privilege of meeting MK Abiola, but I've, I've written so much about MK Abiola, and I've read so much about him. MK Abiola is one person that is not poor mentally. Mm. Mm. We have leaders in this country. To those who have even became president of this country, who are poor mentally. See, my dear, it's poverty for you to want to own everything. Well, I agree with you, Oloye. And this is why I'm going to read this this thing now. This question. Uh, Oloye will jump in first, then Mazu follow. I'm going to read this uh, um, assertion. United Nations Development Program, that's 2021, says that investments in education and vocational training has proven effective in reducing crime rates as it provides individuals with legitimate means of employment. Now, Oloye, Mazu, the question, I want you to be honest. As it stands right now, do you really think young people of Nigeria are still interested in legitimate ways of making money? Or they've been bought by seeing what is obtainable by the fast way of making money by these politicians or whatever the media has been projecting or whatever they see. No, 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 no. And say that, no, they are going to make money in this route, which is the shortcut, not a legitimate way. Let me, let, uh, before Mazi comes in, uh, because... Um, I work with young people. And like I tell you, it's very challenging. It's disturbing that young people in this country don't want to work. Uh, um, let me give an instance. A core member served in my organization. A core member served in my organization. And he was already um, equating himself to myself, to me. Wow. He just finished his career, just had me. You want to start using the kind of time I'm using. You want to start. You already see yourself. Mm -hmm. Only what I hold. And I laugh. I said, my dear, I've been in the trenches. I've been on this job for over 20 years. Yes. Okay. Must be 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've seen young people who don't want to work, who don't want to pick up, who don't want to pick up a, a job that they can even grow in their career. Mm -hmm. Why do people now want to? Yes, because our society celebrates nonsense. We don't celebrate value. Mm. We don't celebrate hard work. We don't celebrate honesty. See, if today I start riding five uh, Prado G twenty twenty four model, and I enter my community, my community will help me. They will give me a chieftaincy title. too. Step next to the king. The only thing is, even some people will even tell the king to stand up from his chair and let me take the throne because I have money. Mm, mm, mm. If you do this, you sit with your money. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yeah. So people don't, the society put this pressure. Mm. One will be a 14 year old person be looking for money for 14 years okay. old. What the uh, Mazi, was a fifteen year old what to be rich for? Mazi, you can help us mute. You can help us mute. Um, um, yeah. What was a fifteen year old what to be rich for? You see, French graduates leaving universities wanting to become billionaires the following day. Take a look at Dangote. Dangote grew in, in the eyes of everybody. From Dangote, yeah, we'll that it. was selling sugar, important sugar. From that go that was the process we made today. That go is owns the largest refinery in the continent or in Africa continent. I think second in the world. I'm not sure of that figure. But, but the, was it the same that the Dangote woke up one day and became that? But you see, people, young people who today wants to wake up and wants to say, No, my lord, the Dangote law. My dear. Going to be put in the world. So, Mazi, I want you to jump in right now. And the question is very simple. Reading from that assertion, Oloya has done justice to it from his own angle. Are young people still interested in legitimate ways of making money, or things have gone south? Mm. Yes, sir. 
young people are very, me, I'm a young person. Are you getting me? I use myself as an example. We are very, very much interested. What we just seek for from the government is what conducive environment. Now, we are talking about uh, technical and vocational training. If our governments have been putting all these things, the factors, the right equipment on ground before now, are you getting me? This country would have turned to a country of a, a, a revolution. Revolution in what? Many innovations. You understand? We live in a society whereby people take more spiritual activity serious than innovation. If you go to other countries in the world, you will see their kids, they are developing phones right from where they are in secondary schools. But yeah, because we don't have those equipment, those environments, that's why you see people Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they are in the churches. Are you getting me? I don't say, I'm not saying, I'm not against it, but there's time for everything. That is why we are backward. That's why our country is what? Still developing. So if the right environment is here, if you're into technical ability and the right equipment is there for you to explore, why? Young people will do well. So another thing is that our leaders are not also encouraging most of the, especially the political class, when giving them opportunity to be governor, senators, or hold, hold any uh, political position that has to do with funding or a lot of resources around it. The way they embezzle money is not encouraging any person. That's why if you ask any young person today, he will, ask you, he will tell you that I want to be a politician. Is politician a job? <laughs> you understand? Yeah. And why did they say they want to be a politician? Because they also want to embezzle money. Because it is one of the fastest way that is the like, 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 where you can do work, where you can embezzle money. The young people of this great country, they really want to work. Okay, but both of you have pitched tents on the same thing. Oloya has said that we celebrate nonsense in Nigeria. We, 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 things that are not supposed to be celebrated have been celebrated. And that is the same thing you're also saying that, also we have gratified you know, crime and pe we've even made it look lucrative so that people actually are encouraged to actually want to go into things that have made people so rich in the wrong way also to go and practice yeah. it. So I, I have separate questions for you then. That is it. We are going to call... And it will be the last question which join you, and that is it for 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 now. So my last question is this: uh, uh, for for both of you, which is individual questions, back. separate from. Oh, yeah, you still with us, please. Uh, are still with yeah, us, please. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Okay. okay good. Um, I I, I can see reading from Didi's pantry. Now, good. Um. Uh, actually, uh, big shout out to everybody that has joined. I can see my, my, my very good friend, Ola Bieni. And Didi said, another contributing factor is unrealistic standards set by social media. She said, as a result of poverty, some parents also out, out unrealistic, some parents also have unrealistic expectations on their kids. They see their kids as an investment, investment they must get return on any. Our role models need to do better. Politicians, musicians, actors, and actresses displaying extravagant lifestyles, and our youths are thinking that is the reality. So I think, yes, we are on the same page in this matter because Oloya has actually hit the nail on the head, and Maz has also done justice to that. Now, my question, which is going to be separate um, for you, Oloya, based on my understanding about you, this is why I devised this question for you, my understanding about you, and I devised this separate question for Mazi, which is going to be separate. Now, so this is for you, Oloyi. Now, you see this engagement now. We can see many youth wasting away. And Africa has been said to be a young continent. At 60% of its population has youth. That means that Africa is a young continent, vibrant. And you know what youth, being youth means? You mean energy must be diverted into something. But these people are actually lying in the door dance. And we can see, you know, uh, them giving themselves into things like drugs. The high take of drugs is actually... And we can link this poverty to drugs, to crime, and also luring them into, uh, you know, in things like human trafficking, organ harvesting, things that, like kidnapping that has been on the rampant right now. Now, let us now ask one question, Oloye, because you're a journalist, because of what I know about you. Say, what, are, what are those international influences Involvement in these transnational crimes that are going on. What do you think are these international influences? Which can we link it to media or can we link it to the fact that yes, they have presence already doing business and miss this youth 
diverting them since the since the government are not actually engaging them they are, do we have international influences actually involving in all these transnational crimes going on okay so this, uh, so that, uh, yeah africa is a young is a young continent I, I was in south africa some weeks ago and i could see the power of young people in nigeria you could see the power of young people um, in Rwanda and Congo, you could see the power of young people. But the challenge is this. How are we channeling the energy of these young people to be productive? You made a very good point. When you were talking about China, you make a very good point when you are talking about China. If you are looking at developed economy, they are channeling their energy to the right thing. But are we doing that in the sub-Saharan Africa? This is one very question we should be asking ourselves. See, we should go back to vocational training, particularly in Nigeria. If you take a look at, at the high level of young, um, of million jobs, you could not get people to do them in Nigeria. It's alarming. Yeah, I, Today, for you to get a good mason, for you to get a good, good filer, for you to, yeah. you might need to go to yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, neighboring countries like um, Bende mm -hmm. and um, Togo. Mm. African people, particularly the young people, must come together, must realize that the strength of the continent relies on them. We must wake up. Oloye, you see, Oloye, what, to, 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 yes, to your point, to mm. point. Actually, here in the so-called yeah, development countries that people are watching to come here, what people learn. The government actually sponsor people to go and learn bab, bab, uh, baba, help making. See, let me tell you something. I, I'm managing the Meji, I'm managing a skip for a state government where I have engaged over 3,000 young people. And I can tell you that out of these 3,000 young people, less than less than a thousand of them are ready to work. They come to tell you that oh, the work is tedious, they cannot do it. And let <laughs> the it's a time bomb. Nigeria is sitting on a time bomb that if care is not taken, if care is not taken, by the time our population explodes and we have an army of young people who are not doing anything. Baba, <laughs> uh, the... Baba, Baba, we had a glimpse of what happened just recently. And that, that's an example. It's just a, it's not a tip of the iceberg. We had a glimpse of one million boys. The one million boys, I, I think even Yahoo boys came out of their compound and they turned to vigilante. Nobody is actually coming out of their senses to notice that this energy that they are not diverting to the right use is going to bounce back on the society. You're on point, Oloye. Because that one million boys, I'm yet to see one person that is trying, that don't do those kinds that saying, no, oh, a mini bata, mortis, or whatever. These guys, they are unified. They don't even have, they don't, they just knew that we are the homeless. They feel guilty to homelessness, to, to, to hunger. And this, this youth went out and said, no, we are going to do care of the police people who are there. So if we are not, we are, we are very right, we just bought us a question. Mazi, uh, please, if you can wind up your car, or if you are not speaking, there's, there's an icon beside the video icon, which is mute, so that we can, you know, uh, the environmental noise can be reduced while we are having conversation. So once I call you to speak, you just unmute yourself, okay? So um, uh, Oloye, you were saying something. That I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I was just, you know, furious within my spirit as I'm talking, because I wanted to enact that point before I forgot. Sorry to obstruct you. Yeah, so that can come again. I, I actually missed the yeah. line. I was saying that the one million boys issues is a, is a way to, to be a wake up call to us. Is it one million? Is are you talking only of one million boys? Are you not looking at insurgency in the northeast? Are you not looking at banditry in the north central, in the northwest? Do you think those do, those perpetrating this crime are old people? They are young guys. Have you read the profile of them? Truji, the notorious bandit leader. How old is he? He still fall under the category of a young person. Do you understand? And when you are talking about criminality and poverty, let's go back to the north. Let's go back to the north. What breed, what breed the current place of criminality we are seeing in the north today is poverty. The Almagiri kids that they, they, they refused to do something about. Those boys now, 
Those boys, they did. Those boys, they refused to train. See, I will not want to try for us in the southwest, in the south. Do you understand? Out of every ten people you see in the south, say southwest. Out of ten of them, I can tell you that seven to eight of them have secondary school education. Yeah, out right. of every ten young people you pick in KB states, how many of them have secondary education? And do you expect them to take to crime? We must be serious. We must be serious as a country. Then we must be serious as a young person. We can't blame the government. You understand? But we can blame the society. Note that the family, the religious organization, the government, all of us, the media, all of us constitute the society. So we cannot blame the government. We cannot blame just one person, but we can blame the society. And I can tell you that the contribution of poverty to criminality, particularly in Africa, it cannot be underscored. Hmm. Poverty of the mind, poverty of common needs. Well, thank you so much, Oloye. Before I now ask the final question, let me ask Mazi his own personal question. Mazi, your question is this. Uh, because of your annex, your proximity, to those in powers, I've seen you sat and dine with them. And I know that you have done a lot of project with them. I've seen you with, um, you know, played some strategic, strategic important roles with, um, um, what is that, Tonto DK. I've seen you with many icons and, you know, well, big ups to you on your platform, your platform. And last I remember, uh, before I left the shores of Nigeria, we we're planning to have, you know, a subsidiary of your platform in the state. We're still at the teething stage of it. Then one way or the other, we 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 couldn't, you know, arch that because of my transition. But that being said, um, uh, Mazi, I want you to come in in as a guards as a guards policy formulation. You see, I want you to talk now as an authority in line of policy recommendation. If you would talk about to recommend policy that will change and address poverty crime linkage in Nigeria, what, what will it be as we stand right now? As we stand right now, a lot of people, have, I've listened to a lot of people talk about um, education. I've seen people talk about it, 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 vocational training, changing the course of education itself and all. But what is that policy education that is core, that seems like an emergency right now to you? that yes this is the act of which we are going to be getting serious like Olori said that we need to get serious now if we are going to get serious what is that policy policy recommendation that we need to now start focusing on to say yes we are moving in the right direction um first and foremost is that we need to strengthen our public institutions strengthening our public institution is where injection of fund uh inversion injection of fund into public institutions such as uh, public health centers, our public schools, and also, um, yeah, uh, public schools as well. I think this, these sectors are very, very key because, one, if you are earning 70 as thousand as like a minimum wage, if the public institution is well taken care of by the federal government or state or federal government, I don't think you have any reason to send your child to what to a private institution where you cannot even afford the money. Two, I don't think you'll be taking your child to where to the hospital where you cannot afford the money to give them uh, malaria treatment and all those things. You understand? So this basic need of common man is what has been doing what making many of people to be involved into crime, both the rich and the poor. And secondly, another policy that I'm looking at, if I have the power, is if you're a public office holder, you should not have any reason why to put your children in a private institution or abroad. Except if you are an ambassador, yes, your children can school in the country where you are serving. But if you're in Nigeria, you're a Nigerian governor, you are a minister, you are a public uh, appointee, enroll your children in what? In the public institution. So that, yes, you will have this mindset of doing what? Also making sure that you put the public interest at heart. We are talking about uh, youthful age and strength. So many countries in the world utilize the strength of their youth to develop their countries. Countries like uh, Bangladesh, countries like China, Japan, and co. And what formula and policy do they use? They use the public service works, just like the one that was initiated 
in, in Nigeria. Public service work is an initiative of international labor organization whereby they will engage the young people in all the local government, like the one they did before, 100 persons per local government, which amounted to like several and something, uh, 74,000 uh, young people to be integrated into their local government. And what is the essence? Is to drive development. These are the formula and the pre a, a policy that all, the, all these countries they use. Today, they, the young people that build those countries, but here, when this initiative arrive here, or when they go to borrow this kind of mindset, the people that they put at the end of a fear to manage it, they will fail to manage it, while they'll be putting on their cronies who are not even eligible, who does not have the strength or the passion. It's not all the young people that have the passion to build this nation with us. Some don't have it. Some are taking up some public work because of they are hungry, because of they don't have job. That is why when they get into those positions, they will bastardize those positions. They will bring bad names to people who are eager to serve their country. Some people who are even into customs, police, and other security agencies, they don't have the passion to defend their country. It's because they don't have a job. You will see somebody, they will make, because they give this thought to people, come, you need to get this kind of job, you need to be here. So what I'm trying to say, government needs to start considering people who have passion, who are committed, who are dedicated to move this country to the next level. It is not people of uh, association or people of political interest all the time. That is why sometimes I frown at some positions that they give to some people. However, we don't have to blame them all the time. It's because of maybe political interest. But if we want to get these things right, even all this money they get, buy a bag of rice, give it to people whenever there is protest. I don't believe in it, even though it's palliative. I keep on telling our institutions, no. Government should inject money to critical sectors. So that if I have a malaria, I will go to general hospital. I will go to the to the public general hospital close to my vicinity. How many general hospital, primary health centers that are your locality that are functional? Well, well, None to, of them to, are to, functional. To, to buttress, to buttress, to buttress your point. I, I, I want an analysis of you know. This is me just asking a rhetorical question. Analysis of. The hospitals that the government has built in the last you know, three years, the population is increasing. So are we saying that these government institutions that have been in place from time immemorial are still the ones that are operational and able to sustain the Nigerian people? You know, what how many hospitals that have been built, newly built hospitals, public hospitals, newly built public schools, secondary schools and primary schools at a staggering improving rates? You know, these are questions that we need to you know foresee now and start asking that are we at the dawn of capitalism? instead of mixed economy, that it is not an absolute capitalism in our system. And capitalism only means something that they will create a yearning, if, of, of course, there's no checks and balances. So there will be a yearning gap between the rich and poor. And the middle class will just be an illusion. It will be more like people, you know, that are delusioned. Well, that being said, I'm going to go to my last question and we call it a quick. But before then, I want to say thank you to both of you because you guys, I know you are busy people. I do not take it for granted. But now this is my question. I always ask people to project into 10 years, which should be positive, or if you feel otherwise, yeah, you can speak your truth. The question is, what is your own vision for a poverty-free Nigeria? Maybe in the next decade, do you really think it's something that we can achieve? Or it is a long, you know, a long walk to freedom, like Nelson Mandela's, you know, uh, biography stated. So Mazi, you will jump in right now because I had to pause you. I want you to complete your thought and take this question. Then Oloye will give us the round, uh, final, final, you know, submission yeah, on that. So the question again is, what is your vision for a poverty-free Nigeria? You know, what are the steps you believe that are necessary to achieve this in the next decade? Do you really think we can achieve that in the next decade or, you know, a uh, few years to come? Or you think it's a long walk to freedom or it's not possible at all? So Mazi, continue, uh, complete your thought and jump Yes, yes, it is possible. Now, we, we, we must look at health sector. Why health sector is very important is that overpopulation contributes to poverty in the society. Why am I talking about overpopulation? We need to control the child birth in our country, especially from the north. You will see people that they don't have one another to take care of themselves. You will see them, they will be encouraged to have more than three, five, four wives. They will give him birth. And all those things contribute to poverty. Secondly is that our public, our public schools needs to be strengthened in such a way that there's some curriculum that must to be what integrated in, in areas of vocational training and skills. If we can do those things, 
all many young people they'll be self-employed yes and they will also have resources to take care of themselves it's not everybody that wants to We might be experiencing network issues again. Okay? If I wait a few seconds, and See, come in a story board, that they implement their policies, they need to be proactive implementation of policy. They have good good policy, but they are slow in implementation. Apart from slow in implementation, they don't set the right people in the position of power where they can assist them to implement those policies. You understand? So, if they have the right people that will implement policies that will reduce the poverty rate in this country, our country will be very, very good. While this Jackman syndrome of a thing can also be what discouraged by ensuring that our people, our young people that are very skillful, we should not be allowing them to leave the country because we need that brain. We need their experiences to assist in developing this country. That is why sometimes when they go, we lack those technical know-how to develop our country here in Nigeria. So government need to be looking at those skilled people, those uh, uh, those people that are gifted, those people that are gifted. Even those who are studying abroad that are very gifted, they should be inviting them home and make use of them. There are so many of them that are... I think um act of irresponsibility it is what that is contribute to the high rates of crimes in the society if we encourage the young people in this country many of them will be humble many of them will want to be contributing to national growth and development many of them will be developing the spirit of personality how would they be doing that if our leaders can what can come down to the level of understanding whereby they too they will see them as their mentor their role model once in a while encourage them see it does not have to do with only the government alone. It has to do with collaborative efforts by the citizens, encourage citizens' participation in everything they are doing. They seek, seek for their own opinions as well. So this country will go far in ensuring that the high rate of poverty is really Poverty is a time bomb that if we cannot control it from now to the next 10 years, I want to assure Nigerians that all of us are going to suffer for it because one, you cannot ride in your car comfortably. 10 people or 20 people will gather and be begging you. Anything you put on the road, consider it not. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's ministry, department, and agency. Even your directors will be doing what they'll be frustrating their co workers. They'll be delaying file because of the same poverty. In our educational institution, lecturers, HOD, vice chancellor, and co. In one way or the other, they'll be extorting students. In one way or the other, they'll be frustrating students. In one way or the other, students will not be graduating at the time they're supposed to graduate. So poverty has eaten deeply into our country and the only way we can do it is one standard education man the network is really is really glitching mazi but since it is last is last statement we will be patient a little innovation bit. technology and is that what yeah 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 i think your network is just you know uh, coming on and off it's okay glitching, um, so okay. you know uh, they need to strengthen our educational institution by ensuring that we have new curriculum such as education scraps of departments that are not even necessary what are we going to do with business administration what are we doing with uh, 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 some some courses that does not have any economic value there are some courses i cannot even encourage my siblings to go into again let us encourage Nigerians, our students, to go into courses, to study courses that will help to develop our country. Let there be a new career. Let them import more people that can help us to train our students, especially in the area of ICT. Look at that. The, the, the nation is developing into AI. What is our country doing about AI? We are not even doing anything. Okay, the, Marzi, the, the, the time of COVID-19, we could not even be holding meetings because of any meeting that does not have to do with physical meeting. Things will not go well in the country. Now, what is our country doing about that experience that we learned during the COVID-19? Are we doing it about the AI? Are we doing it about technology? We can import the okay. people. 
from outside the country, let them involve and get engaged our students so that we can pass this stage of, uh, of uh, underdeveloped teaching, underdeveloped society we are find ourselves, and a KX study that we, we, we were according to study that uh, business administration, uh, food and lab science, all those courses that do not even have any meaning to contribute to our society. And all those courses that we cannot even use to excel in our in our environment. Even when you study civil engineering, it's very difficult to even exercise your your mindset. What you have studied in this country, because we don't have the environment. So let us encourage our educational system. That's one of the best ways to do what to curb this high rate of poverty and to control our child birth, because the thing is really crazy, especially in the north. Especially in the north, now I'm becoming a competition and invest investment. If I a poor man, if you have twenty children, it's an investment. Who is telling you it's an investment? Is it an investment? Before it was an investment, where you send them for trade and not the body. Society is good. Nobody will help you to train your children. It is not even God that trains children any longer. It is when you provide good education and you give them home training that your children' futures can be secured. If your children are not people like Obina that have a very strong mindset, that can take a job of a security man, that can take a job of Kule Kule just to survive, just to ride jam, just to survive in university. It's not every children. The children of nowadays, they cannot even work. None of them can even take up a minor job to do what? To go to school. None of them can take up a minor job to even go to studio if they have talent, if they if they have Your job to save some money to gather some money to go to the studio to shoot a video or so they'll be dependent on friends they want to involve themselves into criminal activity at the end of the day their destiny being cut short without achieving any wow. result in their life thank you mazi you have said a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot, a lot of lessons to take from everything you said i can only say thank you um yusuf the greatest yusuf said these courses will sell in a good economy and he also made a comment, he said, even if you study the so-called good courses, there's no market for it in Nigeria. You have to leave the country. The economy is the issue. Yeah, we can look at it from that angle as well, um, Yusuf, you're right. Uh, we are just venting because Nigeria is a country that we love. My own personal opinion is the fact that government should be at this point, at this critical point, an issue of volunteerism. Take, we can't Avoid of afford a how, how 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 crazy can it be that our politicians are getting paid even more than a stable economy? That's that's madness, bro. It's it's it, it, I, I, it, 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 you know, it's just like okay, let me just put this in another case scenario with you. How can you believe your ears when you say a cano pillar play player right now? Cano pillars is getting paid more than Leonel Messi. And say Ronaldo, you, 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 you want to phantom it and you want to ask yourself some logical questions around why, how, for what reason, you know, a lot of questions will pop up your mind till you say, I don't want to think about this, it's going to make me go crazy. Uh, right now, gov like um, although you said before, like people want to go into government to go and embezzle because that has that is another avenue to make money rather than we have quality leadership where people deliver and what they pride themselves is their you know record of innovations, achievements, record of oh, they are competing, you no know, positive competition. Uh, Ogun State is the first to do this, then your copy, then this copy, then that. That is not the issue right now. The competition is embezzlement. Oh, 30 billion dollars, no code, 70 billion dollars. It was you no know, embezzled and this. It's crazy. It's crazy. And um, I wish Oloye could come back and give us his last statement. But while we are waiting for that to be possible or not, Marzi, I want to say a big thank you for you creating time, for you pouring your heart out from what from out okay um i think Olu is back uh, we have always last statement Mazi, just hang around then we call it a quit uh, uh from how you saw from the way you sounded i could i could feel the passion from your voice Oloye, welcome back we want to have your last you know your last um submission uh, uh your last submission uh, Oloye, and the question is what is your vision for a poverty-free Nigeria. Do you think we can achieve this in decades to come? What are the steps you believe that are necessary? Or, or you think it's a dream cut short from the start? Uh, 
a poverty free nation might absolutely not be possible, but we can reduce poverty to the barest minimum. And um, reducing poverty to the barest minimum also has to, has to, we meeting up with the um, some targets and some indices. You see, basic things like water, electricity, access road should be solved, should be available for our people. And um, so, and if these basic things are available, we should also now talk about employment opportunity. We should create jobs. Africans should, Africans should delve into the tech world. Africa should innovate to solve the unemployment challenge in Africa. The, the network is really I big issue. strongly believe this will really help the continent. For Nigeria, our government should understand that they must take care of the citizen. The citizen should be responsible enough to also liable to themselves. Government should create jobs. People should be willing to work. Young people should shun crime and embrace meaningful engagement. This will really help uh, our society. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Oloye. And um, thank you so much, Mazi. I really appreciate you guys. Um, to be quite honest with you, I do not take um, all this for granted. Um, when I have access to people, I do not take it as a right. It is a privilege. And I am honored for the fact that I, I, I beckoned on you and you granted the call beyond the passion we have, which is for a better Nigeria that we want to seek. Uh, it's also you know, um, uh, an honor for me to say, come to my platform and come and hear your opinion. And you say, yeah, you want to jump on board because you guys are, you know, you are vast. You are guys that could be called on, you know, bigger platform and other platform also. But for you to actually say, oh yeah, Dimeji, there's no problem. Let us come to your platform and also say this. I find that very, very honorable and I do not take it for granted. Thank you so much, Mazi. Thank you so much, Oloye. I appreciate you so, so much. And I, I wish that uh, we, would, we would live to see, see to see a, 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 a Nigeria that is going to work for us and for the general populace. Uh, in the nearest future, I pray that uh, um, if fortune smiles on us, we should be part of the players, key players that will also uh, um, erect our flag and our legacy and say, yeah, we are part of those people that also initiated this change in the land. So once again, I want to say thank you again, Marzi, uh, and I appreciate you. Do have a lovely, lovely week ahead, and uh, we're going to have a conversation after this, uh, and thank you very much. And for everybody that has been following, from Yusuf to everybody that has been commenting, uh, to Didi, to every, everybody that has been supporting me from day one, we've been having intellectual plays every day. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Next Sunday, I'm going to bring some, some interesting guys on board as well. As usual, we're going to have an intellectual fellowship. And um, I want you to follow me next week as well. Join on that fellowship. Right now, I'm going to edit this, put it on Spotify and on YouTube. This is me saying bye for now. Streets and Cathedral should already be your favorite port.